Hello there, my gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous friends. We are playing more Subnautica Below Zero today. Sort of playing, sort of just reading. I don't know if you, me you heard me mention from last part. Um, this part will just be me uh, catching up on the um stuff that I uh, have been putting off because the way I've been going at it, I keep earning more than I'm reading and it sucks not reading them when I pick them up, so that's what we're gonna be doing. I mean, I might go out and grab some bladder fish if I need liquids, you know, but, um... No, I'm, you know, just, you know, be prepared for just that. I know it's weird, it's gonna, I think, probably I'm gonna put this out, like, right after the other one. You might be going, what is that about? So that's why this is, yes. So, yeah, not offended, I realize that, um... Maybe not everybody's cup of tea to just, you know, get a little bit, so I'm not offended if you... Skip it or whatever, or you know, fall asleep to the sound of me reading. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not offended, uh, because there's a lot to read and I understand. But I will ramble on and, um, you know, make connections or or whatever. Think about things loud. Verbally process is the word I'm looking for here. And I've got a nice cup of tea with me, and so um, I should be hopefully good to read for a while. Uh, let's start at logs and communication seems the most important, right? I, I want to know more about um, everything Altara's doing. That seems like the main story bit. Oh, control room, rapid depressurization. Two, weld team and electrical. We're getting closer. I know the control room will change the process of base building. It contains all the information you need in a singular place. Energy delegation for low sunlight areas, build layout, structural information, etc. We're leaps and bounds away from V1, which literally just rolled to the bottom of the ocean, even on flat ground. Rapid implosion is supposed to be painless. I hope that's true. Definitely a better way to go than the electrical fire in V5.7. Poor way to go. Super unfortunate radio call over here. Jasmine was the latest worker that volunteered to test the control room, for hazard pay, of course. She was on the radio examining some information panels when she experienced rapid depressurization due to a hull breach. I don't know why there was a dash in that sentence. She was on the radio examining some information panels when she experienced rapid... Alright, uh, apparently the panels were welded poorly and blew a hole in the wall. So no hazard pay for her, or anyone else for that matter. At least she didn't suffer. This next build should have all the kinks ironed out. Great, no, that's great. I mean, it's funny that um, we've already built that <laughs> control room, so... Uh, I, I guess we got the good version. All the, all the things... I loved it, it's Altera though. You know darn Altera. That they just like... Workers just die. <laughs> they just implode. And it's just like, whoops. I mean, well, at least we do. We don't have to pay them. Great. You know, it, it could just be that Sam... You know? Freaking Manu probably told her, you know, go go test out that control room, why don't you? And she just... Poof. That would suck. Gosh, though, yeah, so... It's, it's, it's literally just rolls up on the ocean, even on flat ground. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. I, I, it said energy delegation, I, um... I don't quite know what that's referring to. Uh, yes, next thing. I mean, I guess I, I mean, I know what that's referring to in terms of like. I'm assuming that. Just. Sh like, oh, it sh I'm stupid. It sh probably shows um energy input output for stuff. I ah, is fine. Oh, uh, investigation report Omega Laboratory. And that's where we, that's where we recently were. So, right, okay, now I'm gonna have to read. Investigation notes Omega Lab was first breached by heavy impact. Perhaps from a sea track modified with some sort of battering implement. A localized explosive charge was then released and detonated from a distance. Lab equipment was damaged to the point of inoperability, and all live specimens were destroyed. No personnel was injured. Samples have been collected for analysis to determine whether any bacteria escaped. It is, however, unlikely. The heat of the charge should have boiled everything within a 10-meter radius. 
I, I don't know why, I'm just getting the impression it did. Do you think Sam did that? The, the thing that sticks out to me is, uh... Lab equipment was damaged to the point of inoperability. All live specimens were destroyed, but no personnel was injured. I mean, it's an inside job, obviously, because they knew they wouldn't hurt anybody. And who wouldn't want to hurt anybody but our lovely sister, who seems like a very good person. But... She's busy with Altara, and perhaps she knew, because wasn't she, um, assigned? No, she was assigned Apple Zero. Right? Was she at Omega? God, this is what we're forgetting. She was at Omega. Didn't she have a room with... What's her face? Danielle at Omega? Is this where he found that? Oh, kill me. This is why I gotta raid things sooner. I don't remember Alexis, by the way. She seems very no nonsense, which is fine. I, it's not. I don't have a negative connotation to that yet. But um, no, it seems like again, yeah, inside job, which is what you know, uh, you know, we um commented on or whatever when we got there in the first place. Interesting, though. I do wonder, cause you know, obviously, um, Sam knew that Altara was planning on using that. Like, horrible bacteria or whatever to make a weapon, and so... Maybe... Maybe she was trying to stop that. Maybe it was it was happening there. Report enzyme mutation study. We've studied the first Kara bacteria samples from the specimen. Results are promising. We were able to stimulate rapid multiplication of cells in a controlled environment, resulting in the creation of several different mutations with potentially useful applications. Think of the possibilities. Life-saving treatments, genetic research. It could be a window to understand the evolution of life on this planet. The findings could move us forward by years. We recommend a wider study, using samples collected from a greater variety of sites around the original pustules. We trust you will provide the necessary security to do so. The Leviathan site must be protected. This is another mention of the Leviathan site. Which I'm assuming is the one that was mentioned to be frozen but um and i wonder if they, they it by protected do they mean they like, kept frozen don't let it thaw i don't know i guess it would be uh, this is a frozen place it would be frozen it makes sense um i th th there was i'm not i'm not making this up right we've heard some mention of um how It was um something Sam was saying about how they're going to um All right, this is where it's Sam was was transferred to Oh wait, congratulations Rose for Danielle and our team at Omega Lab. The Cara bacteria study important positive implications for life sciences. I th what um Was it this one? Th who who said so? Oh god, we've got C truck log two and three, but not one. What do you do? Um Gosh, I hate to be taking so long on each note, I apologize. But I don't want to like just read them and have them go by and not think of them. But I know Sam said something about like um They're using the the Kara to make weapons or something? I don't know if she sent it to us though. Altera oh wait, wait, um We found a frozen Leviathan that's infected with Kara. Altera thinks they can use it for something. Weapons, experimental treatments, whole range of things. But one end of the range is ugly, dangerous. But profitable, of course. What if it gets out? We're messing with her. What if it ends up a bio in the wrong hands? Okay. So that, yeah, okay. It gives us our answer. Because the way um Danielle was talking about it in her report, it seemed like it was just a straight positive thing. Like, wow, we can help so many people out. But obviously, it's also a potential weapon. You know, we know from the first game, right? That's the, the, the Kara mutation thing. Right? That's the same thing from the first game, right? I, it's, um... 
it's it's good to um it's good to know where we're at because uh, again we know that danielle and and sam were friends and then obviously more with the flirting that was going on which is very sweet but I, I don't know if they had some disagreement because the way Danielle was talking, it was like, wow, we've done something really good with this car that we found. And then Sam's like, oh, I don't know if we should be touching this stuff. Interesting. She's on a cracker. Saw me. Managed to eject the cargo modules and hide. Sitting here with the lights off, sweating through my shirt. I'm not going to get pooped out of the back end of a sea monster to save Altera some money. Manuel, not going to be happy. Not one bit. What was this again? Fall near the shadow shallows. Alright, I, I I get the feeling there's gonna be more to this. It's not like Sea Truck Log One is gonna have all the information. Surely there there's a um I don't, a thrilling conclusion. I feel like this one's just more like it can't just be all flavor text of like, whoa, well, I almost got chomped by a monster. But that's what these seem to be is like, almost got killed. What do you do? Uh, uh, Danny's not here, I'm afraid. Uh, that's okay. It's you I wanted to see. What's that you're working on? Just a sketch for a piece I want to make. <sighs> I'm slacking off. Don't tell the boss lady. <laughs> I won't. It's beautiful. What is it? I'm doing a series inspired by bacteria. Mutant beauty. Life, death, risk. You know, that kind of thing. What's this one? It looks like Harab, but... Vin, is this a mutation? It's just an art project. You know you're doing that thing with your neck, like when you're trying to bluff an alien intruder. <sighs> right, fine. Fine. I'm bad at lying. Are you mutating Karab bacterium from the frozen Leviathan? Here? In this lab? Please, don't ask me any more questions. I don't think I need to. I mean, that almost gives us our answer, right? About the whole, um... Whoops, my pictures are black again. <laughs> I didn't notice that from before. It was probably the... Things I put down? I was gonna say, uh, one of these. I can't even pick up this one anymore. So that's not great. Um, whoops, hopefully it's this one then. Uh, uh isn't this his art? Which tells me, um... As uh, Sam was down there. Well, this isn't it. It's the other one. Great. Super good. And if I take it off, it might sink the whole place, or at least ruin my structural integrity. It's fine. Oh, we remember it. It was sort of green and blobby. I'm assuming that's the one he's talking about. This, this just looks like an abstract piece of art. It could be the bacteria, though. I don't know. Um, That almost gives us our answer, though, in terms of... uh, Did Sam blow the place up? Because it does seem to be that's the lab she's talking about. It's Omega Lab, obviously. And, um... Because that's where the, you know, xenobiological research was going on. And... She was there, I guess. Sam was there. I, I forgot if there was a mention of her. I don't think she was transferred there. She must have just been visiting or something. I don't know. But... Obviously, yeah, Daniel and Sam were there. Because I know Vin... And, um... Danielle, they had rooms down at Omega, I'm pretty sure. Because I remember in Vin's room, there was like a postcard, which we haven't gotten to yet. It must be with this wish you were here. But, um... It's it's interesting now. It's interesting hearing this. Because it does seem like Sam realized, oh my god, they're, Altera's doing something I didn't want them to do. I better stop it. I think that's what's going on. Here's the postcard. The wish you were here. God, I wish I was there too. That looks gorgeous. Oh my god, that looks beautiful. Hey, Tiger. Miss you a lot. I can't wait for both of our assignments to be over with. Deltar 6 has been an amazing opportunity. I never tire of watching the sunrise and sunset over the black sands of the Chirazain Desert. It's beautiful. The only way that it could be better is if you were here, loving you across the stars. I, I, Irene, I, Irene, I, Irene. Yes, it's probably an actual name, and I just am flubbing it. Is it an actual name? I'm so sorry. This is your name, Irene. 
I real and a that's it's pretty it's really pretty um I'm so sorry <laughs> point is um it's uh it's really beautiful I can't understand it though I mean with these like giant assignments that they're getting on these planets where they have to stay for I'm assuming very very long of a time to do the research and everything I can't imagine being planets away from somebody that I loved it's the same thing with Manu talking about, like, actually it's beneficial if we're far away because we're much more efficient that way or whatever he was talking about. I thought it was weird there, but I thought that was just a weird thing. But here, clearly, um, I think this is events with Ven, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right as well. Um, he, you know, is, is also away from somebody he loves. And they're on different assignments on, on whole different planets, which is crazy. But then I guess it was the same with, um, Sam and me. You know, with sisters, you know? I couldn't imagine being away from a sibling like that either. Anybody, any family, anything. I, it's, it's planets away and just sending postcards across the freaking universe. That's, that's gotta suck a lot. That's gotta, that's gotta, I, I don't know. And I love how it's a postcard. I mean, that's. That's kind of cute. There's probably some super futuristic way to send them, but I love how it's, it's a postcard that's cute. Uh, okay, so Terra personnel. Alexis R Riedel? Riedel? Oh, yeah, it's the one that uh, gave the report. What? I just just remind myself, what was the report on? It was, um... The... R uh, she, she was talking about how the um accident happened, which I'm assuming was Sam. Alright, um, independent investigator. Oh, an investigator! Okay, okay. So if we find more stuff by her, that's important. I'm assuming there might be something later that tells, like, we had to transfer Sam to a different branch of whatever, and we transferred her to the danger branch of people we want to die. It's something like that, I don't know. Transgov Affairs, reports to Altera HQ. Hmm... Didn't... Yeah, th so she doesn't even have a personality. Look at that. <laughs> I just mean, in terms of those number things. Uh, Dr. Danielle Valenti. Yay! The one that, that Sam's flirting with. She looks nice! I do worry, though, about how she's working in the place that Sam obviously dislikes. It's as if, um, Sam is, like, uh, hearing about this place from Danielle. And that's where she's getting her opinions and information. And I gotta imagine there's a lot of tension there in the relationship of of Danielle being like, maybe I shouldn't have told you these things. Like, I'm doing my research, honey. Please don't. Please don't blow it up, okay? I know you think it could be turned into a bomb, and it can, and they probably will, but please don't. I don't know. Oh, uh, senior scientist, biochemistry, reports to Emmanuel. Uh, current project, bacterial analysis. Alright, alright, alright. I'll, I'll stop trying to understand those numbers down there as well. Um, Finn, Finn Fam, junior scientist, biochemistry, Dr. Daniel Valenti, bacterial analysis. So he he works for Danielle. That's interesting. Then I, I kind of got that. He seems friendly. I don't look at his face. He just seems sweet, and the way he um. Even the way he kind of blew off Sam and said, like, no, it's just art project. It's I'm just doing art here when clearly he wasn't. Uh, even then, I, I, I don't hate him. I just feel like he's not really in charge of the evil. He's just dealing with it and going along with it, which I guess that's pretty evil, too. You know, if you're, if you're like the bystander to evil stuff, you know, that's not good. You should probably stop that. That's why Sam's super good. But yeah, it's tricky. It's a tricky situation. Point is, he seems non-horrible. Seems like a friendly guy. It's just from first impression, from like the two things we got. He meant he got a postcard, right? Pretty sure that was his. And that was sweet. Somebody misses him, so he has to be pretty good, right? Ah, uh, focus. The task revolution. The key to total, uninterrupted focus on what's important is the ability to unfocus on the unimportant. The ultimate goal of concentration is not to block out surrounding environments, but to maintain total focus in spite of them. 
they will be there. You must not only better than you must be not only better than them, but decoupled from them. You've heard of multitasking. Now get ready for monotasking. Studies have shown that humans, even the most capable among us, cannot focus on two activities at once to the extent required to complete them optimally and thoroughly. Multitasking is an illusion to make you think you're getting more done, when in reality, you're most likely neglecting one task or the other. Monotasking rejects the notion that humans should even bother trying to multitask, as not only does it hinder productivity, but it increases stress and even guilt when it doesn't yield higher productivity. You, oh expert task revolutionary, have no time for systems that do not work. So let's explore monotasking more in the next chapter. That's cute. I'm almost- oh, I'm running low on water. Got a multitask this year. Ah, ha, ha. No, but, um, I'm wondering whose room that was in. Does it feel- I should eat some nuts as well. Um, I'm wondering, that seems like sort of thing I'd pick up in somebody's room some, like, keys to be more productive sort of thing. And, um, it's cute, it's cute, it's cute flavor text, I like it. I should deposit my things, by the way, before I forget. Uh, just in case I need to go out and get stuff or whatever, I don't want to leave them there. Uh, pretty good. Um, I should get up more bladder fish, but I'll go hunt them down when I need them. Oh, that's cute, though, that's cute. I mean, I get that. It sort of reminds me of that one poster I had, which I should bring over here, you know, one thing at a time. It's smart. I mean, I have heard the thing about, oh, you know, multitasking sort of not right. I mean, you mostly just, like, flip between the two tasks quickly, and that's what multitasking actually is. Our brains can't actually process multiple things at once. Did I really go through? Wasn't there, like, ten things already? I'm feeling great. I don't think any of the rest of them are going to have any, um... You know, reading though. I mean, like, it's not gonna read it for me, it's just gonna be me reading, so. I might take a sip of tea if that's alright. Oh, gotta have my voice not give out or anything. That would be bad. Alright. Uh, flora, sea flora, antenna plant. Alright, we can eat these jokers, right? This species is noteworthy for its colorful leaves, which attract the attention of nearby herbivores. The hungry fish who devour the antenna fruit will then spread the plant seeds across the biome, perpetuating its life cycle. That's cute. That's nice. It's, you know, it makes sense. Plants do that. To spread themselves like that, like dandelions and stuff. Or in this case, I mean... <laughs> I mean, they don't say it, but... Hungry fish who devour it, spread it. I mean, they kind of, you know, kind of goes out the other side, and that's how it gets spread. I'm imagining the seeds. And the, let's not talk about that. Blooming raindrops. Ah, oh, these aquatic flowers grow in various biomes. The thick, bioluminescent bulb that grows out the top of the stem stores nutrients when the sunlight is in short supply. They're pretty as well. I think I remember seeing those down there. Oh, look at that picture on the right as well, in that diagram. It looks tall. Tall little jokers. They look precious. I'm curious, though, um... I guess my dis definition of exploitable... ...includes, like, all foods. Whereas the antenna plant, which I'm pretty sure I could eat, right? Isn't just, you know, sea flora. It's good thing I'm... I'm looking at this. Because it does kind of say, like, it attracts the attention nearby or otherwise that implies I can eat it, right? This one doesn't say anything about eating. I don't think I can eat this. But, I, I, yeah, it, it's nice. It's nice. I hope they give me more of an impression if I can use anything here. I already read this one, right? But this is harvestable fungi. I can eat these, right? Yeah, harvestable and plantable. Mm, thick, meaty caps. I guess that says alone that I can eat it, right? Coral bridge. Oh, right, these are the big, pretty tentacle things. Coral bridges are formed by rapidly growing coral polyps that exhibit digmotropism, which causes growth in response to stimuli or when touching a solid object. Coral bridges grow in thick, 
twisted patterns that anchor onto rocks or other coral. The underside is covered in colonies of blue barnacles. And that is gorgeous little barnacles down there. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I, I know what barnacles look like. I've seen them. I don't think in real life, but on in stuff and... Like, but, like, what? What? What is a barnacle? Is, like, a barnacle alive? It's a question, isn't it? Or is it just, like, a growth? It's gotta be, like, a growth of, like, things. I don't know why I'm more interested in that than the actual thing. That's interesting, though. So... Causes growth in response to stimuli. Touching a solid object. Interesting. Oh, a crescent moon coral. The crescent moon coral prefers to grow vertically, similar to a vine. The branching filaments connecting to the, cre the crescent to the red stem contain tiny flagellum that pull in various microorganisms for nourishment. Blah. Shouldn't be flubbing already. I've got 33 more things to read. They're pretty, though. These, um, things, correct me if I'm wrong, are they not named just based on whatever my, like, um, PDA or whatever decides to name them? Right? Like, the AI kind of does that, I think? Didn't that ma if not in this game, it mentioned it in the first game, I think, where things were just named in a way that would make sense to me, because obviously in their alien language or whoever discovered this first, it wouldn't make sense, so... It's, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, Crescent Moon quite obviously makes sense, Crescent Moon, you know, we know the Crescent Moons, aliens, I mean, have we seen a Crescent Moon yet? I don't know. And it's a cute though, cute. Uh, Frost Anemone, oh, my lovely, lovely snacks. Wonderful. The Frost Anemone grows on the underside of ice flows and icebergs. I don't know if uh, ice flows? I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming... Ice. Ah, uh, the anemone's tendrils are covered in thin, stringing hairs that paralyze small fish and plankton that are broken down for nutrients. These tendrils should be trimmed to effectively harvest the edible heart. Assessment. Carefully harvest for high nutritional value. Carefully, yeah. I just literally go right up to them and slap them down. I go real, real careful about those guys. Alright. <laughs> I'm glad there's no consequence. I mean, it'd be a pretty fun a bit of realism to have it, like, I don't know, stun me or something. I, I could imagine the voice actor or whatever just kind of, like, uh, m mumbling out some words, like, as if their tongue was paralyzed or something, like, and numb from eating something like that, like, basically swallowing a jellyfish, you know? Because that's what it sort of looks like now. Like, I, I could convince myself they were delicious, but now I'm a little a little wary. I still hope I can plant them, for sure, but I, it doesn't seem like I can if they grow on undersides of things. Green Turnian? Which doesn't look green to me. Green Turnians benefit from the lily pad life cycle. They tend to anchor themselves on lily pad roots and near fall on lily pads and use the material as nutrients. They look cute. They sort of look like, um, eggs. You know, like, like, bro like, a, a, it's like a yolk. They look like they have a little yolk on top. Still, though, I, here's the thing, you know, like, if, if, like what I said, um, things are named based off what they look like to me, and not what they were, like, originally called, um, if that's making any sense at all, what I'm saying, then why is this called that? Why is it called a green turnian? Maybe there's something I don't know about it that is making it like that, but in from my perspective, I don't, I don't see a part. Po part. Point. Sorry. Hardy cave bush. A common reddish purple species which grows well on rocky terrain. Sort of boring, but, uh, you know, necessary. To, to look, you know, lively in those places. Kelp root. Contrary to its name, the visible aspect of the kelp root is a thick, twisted stem. The root system anchors deep into the rocky walls of the cave. 
Some kelp roots grow a pustule along that stem, which are formed by the plant slowly ejecting out toxic materials that are absorbed by the extensive root system. Harvestable for resources used in fabrication. That's, yeah, those are the little, like, pu yeah, pus pustule things. Alright. I don't understand, um... The name, exactly? Contrary to its name? Oh, maybe instead of a root, it's not a root. It's a stem. The root says, hey, I'm stupid, yeah, the root says, okay, so it's... Then why didn't they call it kelp stem? I guess that's... It's, it's, it's again, though, if... Laura's saying that these things are, um... You know... Named based off of whatever my AI thing wants to name them... Then surely there should be no contrary to its name sort of objects. What I shouldn't be too nitpicky, I apologize. Luna plant. The luna plant grows in shallow water. Branches grow off of the main stem and create irregular rudimentary chambers. If one branch dies or is destroyed, the other branch's chambers will utilize the nutrients left behind. Eventually, a new chamber will grow in the empty space. That's cute. That's it. Almost um, reminds me of like a miniature uh, lily pads, because that's obviously what the lily pads do. They break down, and then the other stuff feeds off of them, and it helps others grow. You know, it's kind of cute. I like how they're explaining, like the nutrient stuff, or how they spread, or how they um, you know, yeah, propagate and everything. You know, it makes sense for um, I just I that I, I, realism point of view. I might um. Is this is this for water yet? Close, but no. 95, alright. Oh, um I just grabbed some bladder fish. But no, I I mean I know I've said this about a billion times over and I apologize for um you know, repeating myself again and again on it, but I do really quite like it when um the game like explains like the minor details like that. I know it probably doesn't matter to um to everybody, but I don't know. I um. Woof! 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 No! 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 Oh my God! Oh God! I thought I was dead. Oh God! I thought I was dead. Oh, this is supposed to just be a sleepy, nice little part. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, I wasn't supposed to have something that exciting happen. I apologize. <laughs> You're all just like, eh, take a nap, it's whatever. <laughs> It'll be fine. We'll have nothing scary go on. And then I just get nearly eaten by a squid shark. This is great. Bladder fish? Oh, they're not a bladder fish. I'm grabbing other guys too, because I figure, um, my bioreactor might need them, and I figure that's something I can think about as well, right? I forgot. I think I remember it, um, l looking a little low, perhaps? Fudge, stop! Kill me, I'll just go up. I swear I saw another thing, but I don't even care. I'm just gonna eat a bunch of nuts to get my health back. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Wouldn't you just know something like that would happen, huh? No, but uh, 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 go back to the boring point that's uh, more sleep inducing. Um, I'm happy that the game has explanations for things. I like, um, you know, knowing about animals. It's, um, they're interesting. I like, uh, you know, animal facts like that. Like, the, the, the world having a, a, a purpose and a point, you know? I mean, not just, like, fictional in this case, but, like, the real world as well. You know what, just, it, um, I don't know where I'm trying to go with this. I like it. I like it. I think too many games have, like, creatures that don't look as if they should be in the environment they're in, or... Um... Oh yeah, this is empty. Um... Or, um... You know, oh, that's another, um... Look at that, is that water? Kind of shimmery? That's nice. Another feature of that new new addition. But it's another thing, and I've, I know I've said this before as well, but, um... I don't know, when games have... Obviously, like, predator and prey creatures that don't act in a predator and prey sort of way. You know, like... 
you, you know, to walk out in like Skyrim and like the saber cat, the bandit, the skeleton, and the dragon all join forces to kill you. They don't go after each other. No, no, no. Despite being on entirely different teams, they go right for you. It's great. But in this case, you know, you see penguins going after prey. You see the squid sharks going after both me and little fishies, you know? I, I, um, I know it's, it's weird to call it cute, maybe. And I know I do call it cute, but I, I think it's cute in that way. It's a cute detail that they've added. I, it's, it's not, it's not something a lot of games think about. I think probably just to add more pressure on the player, because obviously if things did attack each other, it would take a lot of load off, and I understand why not a lot of games do that. I do understand. But it's cute when it does, you know? It does, um, make sense. And again, with all these little details, I know you don't see it in the game, things, you know, t propagating or t utilizing the nutrients left behind from other things or whatever, but it's cute that it's, that it's thought of, that it's there. And you oxygen plants are oh, lovely, lovely pumpkin guy, huh? The oxygen plant produces a harvestable reserve of oxygen in its bioluminescent floating bulb. It is hypothesized that this attracts territorial air-breathing fauna, forming a symbiotic relationship that protects the plant from herb herbivorous fish. Assessment underwater source of breathable oxygen, useful in free diving scenarios. And the one thing that would explain this a little more to me personally is um if I've seen anybody else using it? I mean, from my perspective, maybe the pinglings, do they not? Are they, I mean, can they not breathe underwater? Because they, they just dive down and then come right back up, right? And they've got, like, caves and stuff, so maybe they would use this. But most of the things I've seen... Th this doesn't really explain it. I haven't seen any terrest er, terrestrial, territorial air-breathing fauna. I, I haven't seen anything like that. Most things have been wa water breathing. Uh, I'm very technical. Uh, pink narrow leaf. This grass like species grows in small clusters near coral bridges. They look adorable as well. I like the color, it's very cute. It'd be nice if I could um, plant them. I mean, I know I wouldn't be able to use anything with them, but if I could just like cover my place with them somehow, it'd be nice. Purple cattail. Oh, these are cute too. I like the color as well. Purple cattails grow in small underwater clusters in particularly fertile regions along the seabed. Long, flat leaves allow the plant to efficiently absorb sunlight at depth. Its striking coloration, caused by the pigment anthocyanin, is paired with high levels of poisonous phenols, which discourage herbivorous fish from grazing on them. It's good to know. Again, then, you know, it's an explanation as to why they're, you know, surviving next to other things. You know, why the fish aren't picking them apart or something. Oh, and they're so pretty, too. That's so pretty. I just, it's, it's so, um, intriguing to me to get, uh, explanations for everything, you know? It's not just like, oh, this, this plant looks freaking crazy, isn't it? It's like, oh, wow, th this is why it's colored this way. This is why it's, they, I don't even know if that's a real word. It's anthocyanin. Could be. I, I don't know. But just... It's nice. I like it. Radiant sieve coral. This light-emitting plant is reminiscent of a sieve or colander. That's why it's called that. See, that's why it's gotta be why things are named that way. But, um... Or maybe, maybe, um, other people. Maybe, um, I'm getting my information from... You know... Al Altera that... That, you know, obviously he's done a lot of research here now. Because they could have come by and named everything, right? I don't know. Um. That's, yeah, I like this thing too. I wish I had more information, but. Like, what, why does it admit light? What? That's, it's. Th that's the thing that makes everything look pretty, and I don't even mind it. Ragged pitcher plant. The ragged pitcher plant is the only known species of predatory underwater plant on 4546B. What? What? It grows on mineral-rich hydrothermal deposits. The bowl-shaped pitcher produces a concentrated brine that pools inside due to its high density. When small organisms get too close, they are stunned, 
causing them to sink into the pitcher where they are dissolved and absorbed by the plant. I am now very pissed that this is the only known species of predatory underwater plant. Cause how cool would it have been to like swim near a plant that looks like this but is more my size, you know? Cause I think these are probably on the smaller side still. And like be like, wow, what's in there? What's that shiny stuff? And then like my screen goes dark and then I get sucked in there and chomped on by a plant. Like, that would be amazing. That would be really cool. I know, um, pitcher. Aren't pitcher plants a thing? Like I'm pretty sure I've seen that. I don't know if the, I don't know if it's a similar I don't think it's a similar like predatory thing, but I think they like some liquid or something collects or, or something like that. So it's sort of it's sort of realistic. Not under they're not underwater though. I'm, I don't think they're just a plant. Oh, but they're pretty though. I like that. I like the um again just that it makes sense. Like it's plausible. It's probably because I'm an idiot and I don't know enough about biology and um er herbology what, what do you call it <laughs> this is why I'm stupid no but I don't know enough about plants and, and animals and whatever to disprove any of these things to immediately go well that's not logical you know I, I um I mean, I'm not skeptical enough. I just kind of eat it. I just like, wow, that's cool. Yep, this is nice flavor text to munch on. I'm enjoying this, you know? And, um, I guess suspension of disbelief, maybe? I'll give myself the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, I know this couldn't happen in real life. I don't know if it could happen in real life or not. But, you know, it's nice to imagine it could. That's why I like the logic again. Oh, uh, redwort. A common plant adaptable to many different environments. The redwort is staple a staple part of the diet of many smaller herbivores. Guessing not not me then, but I could try to slap one if I see it. Um Scaly Maw Anemone. The scaly maw anemone prefers and it's maw's mouth, right? It prefers shallow water and ample exposure to sunlight, and exists in a symbiotic relationship with a species of vibrant algae that live atop the anemone's trunk. These algae thrive in the sun, and create a thin, scaly bacterial mat around the structure of the anemone as they feed on other microorganisms that filter through the anemone's water space. Alright, I mean it's pretty. It looks like a bird foot. With little hairs on it. It's, it's nice, it makes sense. I guess the maw is like the algae on top that's eating stuff? Because it doesn't really resemble- unless I'm stupid, maw means something else, but I thought maw meant like a, a mouth. And um, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Seedling lily pad. The first stage of the lily pad life cycle is precarious as the seedling begins to root itself firmly to the seabed. The seedling is surrounded by a cluster of smaller seedlings that will form the lattice branching structures of the mature lily pad. Seedling lily pads require rich soil atop bedrock and constant exposure to sunlight. Which is another reason I like my place for what it is. Because it has, um, sunlight, you know? There's no, uh, ice roofs, you know what I mean? Like, um, Apo Zero had, uh, that's just one thing that wasn't great about it is because it was kind of scary to get to because oh my god if I can't find the entrance right away I will drown under here right next to the surface but I can't get up shelf coral the, a type of stony coral commonly found growing along rocky ledges stony corals have hardened biocomposite exoskeletons the corals polyps continuously grow upwards and outwards in thin layers creating the grooved shelf appearance that's not... It's not the other coral, is it? This is a different one? Right? Or is this the one I'm thinking of? Am I so good? I thought it was like table coral. Is it not table coral? Don't do I have... It what? The location of an important oh! I will share its coordinates so you can look at it. Thank you for... Thank you very much. Signal location uploaded to PDA. 
Thank you very much. I'm sorry. He's thinking I'm, I'm having the worst time of it, I bet. I bet he's just thinking, this idiot can't even make progress. She's sitting in place and not moving. She must be dead or stupid, brain dead, perhaps. Like, maybe I should give her another tip. So, <laughs> that's probably why he gave, gave me another tip. Um, what? Do I not have it? Am I, not, am I stupid about this? I thought table coral was what I got, not... What was it? Shelf coral? But then I'm not saying table coral. Listed. I nearly feel like going out and looking for it just to make sure I've got the right name for it. But then I don't want to run into... Any, um... Progress. <laughs> Like I already kind of have. Alright. Twisted Mandrake. The Twisted Mandrake grows in temperate coral zones. Its leafy canopy photosynthesizes sunlight. While providing shade to the bulbous structure underneath. It looks... Huggably gorgeous. Just lovely looking. There's something about looking at this guy. It, it feels so um fantasy-like, I guess. Like a... Mandrake or something? I don't know what... I don't know what a mandrake is. I'm just throwing that out there. It looks like a ch like a chunky bottom bit with a leafy bit on top. You know what I mean? And don't you just want to hug that? Don't you just feel like you could just give that a good old hug? Ah, uh, maybe I'm sleepy. It just looks precious to me. Violet bow? A common luminescent plant which grows in patches on the seabed. Yeah, these are... Pretty, but I do appreciate that they, they have logs even for like the filler plants. That's nice. It um, I shows attention to detail. I think, you know, because again, you know, most games would probably just like pff, here's a plant. I don't know. All right, on to tech. Let me just take another sip real quick. Oh, okay. Um, we might be going on a little long, but. Or at least a little longer than I wanted to. I sort of was hoping to, you know, all 10 minutes. <laughs> but that was ambitious. Um, I don't know, we're almost there. Well, 17 is a lot. But I'm assuming a lot of these are going to be, you know, what what are they even going to say about the jukebox? Really? Come on. There we go, yeah. Listen to soothing tunes by Altera's best musical artists while you work. Very cute. But, you know, two sentences, come on. Light Stick, a mobile battery-powered LED light which provides low-level lighting in a 360-degree area and can be attached to most surfaces. Is this a, um, like a deployable thing? Or like a tool, not a uh, equipment thing? Or, or is it like a, do I have to use the... Um, Habitat Builder to make it? I'm curious, cause I, um... I, to be fair, I, I mean, to be fair, to be honest, I don't even remember... <sighs> ever building the light stick ever. I'm not even seeing it here. So it's not this. What is it then? Is it a deployable thing? Equipment... It's not here. Tools. There's a flare. Oh, there is light right there. The playable lighting. So it does. It requires a battery. But still, if it's easy to pick back up again, maybe it's nice. But then I got a flashlight. I don't know. I um. It seems nice. There's a lot of times where it's like the lighting's not great here. But you know, when am I ever gonna stay in a place for like too long of a time that I'm gonna need lighting like that? You know. I mean, for me, it's just, uh, get in, get out for a lot of places. Alrighty, um, mineral detector. This little wiggly joker. Using a complex blend of electromagnetic field transmission and beta decay detection, the mineral detector is capable of identifying nearby resources and approximating distance. Two antenna emit an advanced pattern of waves to detect specific minerals for mining. An ultra-bright display visually communicates distance to the target resource. Proximity alarms add an extra layer of information for finite spatial positioning. Yeah. 
all that to say, you know, you're probably gonna want to know at least the region of where the mineral is before you use it. I'm guessing it could cut down on time, though. And I'm curious if it can detect, um, like, titanium deposits or whatever. I, it's, it's a, um, efficiency item for sure. And, um, I don't feel yet I'm at that stage. I feel like I'm still at the learning to swim stage. As opposed to the, nah, yeah, I'll go out looking for some copper right now stage. You know? Because maybe this would be good for if I've already kind of, um, like, a sweep the a place for materials and, and just need a couple more, you know, from it. And I put that in a scanner, oh, that is fine. A uh, habitat installation, the bulkhead door. The bulkhead door is designed to separate compartments while reinforcing structural integrity with its solid titanium frame. The door can be opened and closed to seal off compartments in the event of fire or flooding or simply for privacy. Okay, that's worrisome. I am worried. I am now... I am now full of worry? What? Fire or flooding? <laughs> I didn't know fire or flooding could happen. Is that what happens when structural integrity goes bad? Because I don't like that. Maybe I should build some bulkheads so, like, all my plants don't go up in flames or something? Like, I'm now remembering, um... What was it, Altera saying, uh... Blah blah blah, control room... Blah blah blah... Rapid implosion, blah blah blah... Definitely a better way to go than the electrical fire in version 5.7. So, like... <laughs> Excuse me? Should I seal off my control room? <laughs> I don't like hearing that. I don't like hearing that. Oh, uh, well, control room's next. Ah, uh, the control room is an essential part of outpost engineering, created in response to environments with limited energy generation options. Centrally located 3D console provides an overview of current base layout. Interactive projection toggles power in individual rooms for finite energy control. Oh, that's what they mean by, um, controlling energy. That's really nice too, then. So then if I wanted to, like, hey, scanner room, can you please stop it? I could do that. That's nice. That's really nice. Because obviously, you know, I think I'm dealing with, like, a little too little power. You know, I, I still have to have my bioreactor. It's running out. So clearly I'm, ch I'm chomping on more than I've got. And if I build more stuff, it'll be even worse. I might have to build another solar panel, me honest, just, just so I can, you know, bounce out. But this will be great. That's nice. That's another, uh, another nice thing it does. Uh, did I, um, did I read all that? Uh, interactive projection at all power and individual room for an energy control. Detailed wall-mounted display audits and discloses hull stability and energy consumption. Customizing station controls identifying base details, including name and exterior colors. Atomic clock reports pinpoint accurate lo local time. Very cute. Very, very cute. I like that a lot. That's nice. That's... Because I was thinking, you know, it, it was nice to color my place, it was nice to get a more good idea of the structural integrity and energy usage and whatever, but to be able to turn off stuff, that's, that's nice. Exterior grow beds are the best thing ever. Advanced synthetic soils allow this grow bed to support a huge variety and quantity of alien plant life, and it can be installed anywhere on land or underwater where there is space. Loveliness. Loveliness. There's no more to say about it, really. Floodlight. The standard issue floodlight is designed to focus a bright beam of light in a single direction. Useful in all kinds of industrial and emergency operations. Functions in all known environments. I think this is buildable with the, um, yeah, the, um, habitat builder. I just, again, I can't see the applications, really. Like, it'd be one thing if this was like a, um, you know, one of those games where you can, um, actually, like, terraform and I uh, destroy the environment, because then I could see, like, whoa, there's a big note of stuff there. Let me mine here for a while and drill into the ground. But in this, it's like, whoop, I see a little block of titanium there. Bink, bink, pick it up, go on my merry way. You know, when am I going to need a floodlight? When am I going to need that? Maybe there's going to be, like, a, a significant amount of darkness later on. I didn't even remember in the first game there being that much dark places. But then I do remember in the first game, just... <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes I got to some places and just turned right back around. No, thank you. So, potentially there was a lot of dark stuff and I just didn't see it. I, um... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know quite know the point of that. Um, interior grow bed. Designed for use exclusively inside regulated habitat modules, the interior grow bed is more compact than the outdoor version and features a hydroponic nutrient delivery system. That's great to know about. I mean, it, it's nice that I don't have to water it in the hydroponic nutrient delivery system. It's, I'm glad for future stuff. Again, it'd be fun, realism, with uh, like having to water it every so often, but have it's almost cheap having, um, like, uh, plants whenever I want them. Just chomp them down, eat them, they're growing always. Especially- God, I'm stuck. Am I stuck? Gosh, I was stuck on the floor. Um, I'd say, uh, you know, especially stuff that regrows like this. I mean, it's basically solving the food problem for me entirely. It's water, too, almost, you know, just eat a couple extra and there you go. It's very, very, very useful in a way that I feel like, um, is weird in a survival game. I feel like most of them go, you know, actually, if you want, like, plantable food that's sustainable, like, either you're gonna have a loss of seeds after a while, like, you're gonna harvest, it gives you, like, one seed when you have to have three to plant it, and then you're screwed, or you have to water it. And then, like, replant it all as well. Why not? And then the seed things, well, you know, on top of that. You know, it's a lot of maintenance. A lot of, um... Like a headache of a time. It's not, uh, very easy. Of a thing. And it's almost like, okay, might as well go out and forage, you know? Might as well, you know, get other sources of food. But in this case, it's like, screw all fish life now. Let me just eat shrub nuts. You know what I mean? It's so efficient. And the fact that it only requires titanium to build a planter... And then one of the shrub nuts, put them in there, and then I got a food source, you know? It's it's crazy nice in a way that, um... I mean, great that I haven't played too many survival games, but, you know, most survival games aren't as nice. As far as I'm aware. Oh, anywho. Um, all that to say, I'm very thankful for you, Interior Grow Bed. Thank you for that. Modification Station. Can I build this? I should build this if I can. I've got the thing for it, so maybe I... Oh, yeah, uh, modification station. Uh, where the standard st uh, fabricator atomically rearranges raw materials to form complex devices. The mod station is able to combine complex devices to enhance their function. Most industrial vessels are fitted with a comp complement of equipment modification stations, which enable engineers to adapt their tools on the fly. Most industrial vessels are fitted with a complement of equipment modification stations. Alright, so, uh, not this place though. I, I, I guess I gotta build one. It's saying most places have them. Why don't you get one, Joker? To conserve hard drive space, the modification station is excluded by default from most personal emergency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personal emergency blueprint libraries. However, extreme environments such as ocean and desert class planets may necessitate the adaptation of basic survival tools for unanticipated applications. For this reason, access to a mod station is always recommended yeah there we go that's why that explains it um so do i have that because i swear if i had that i should have been building it already right why haven't i been you know oh is it a is it a habitat builder kind of thing oh there it is it must be yeah um uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's like a- it's like a thing on the floor. Oh, uh, computer chip, titanium- diamond. Diamond! That's why we can't build it. Still, that'd be nice, though. Cause I know that would give us, um, access to- didn't we get, um... Some, like... Other... Uh, there, yeah, flippers, yep, swim charge fins. Cause that's kinda nice. Those are nice, you know? Cause I think I think those, if you have your sea glide out, you can just use it forever. Which is cool. But I know there's some other fins too, like fast ones. At least in the first game. They could probably add even more now that are really awesome. A high capacity tank would be nice as well once I get it. It's uh, nice stuff, nice stuff. But uh, again, diamond, whatever. Hopefully next part we'll get that. Planters and pots. 
Interior planters come in a variety of configurations and allow for most plant species to be grown in small numbers. For decorative or botanical use. It's nice that they say decorative. I might have to get some nice decorative things, like those cattails I mentioned. It'd be nice to have a, a bit of um, color in here. Just to liven the place up a bit. Water filtration system. The filtration system draws water unfit for human consumption from an external source, atomically splits it into its consti constituent parts, and outputs consumable liquid water and salts while disposing of any harmful byproduct. It can be built in any compatible habitat module, but has substantial power requirements. Oh, that's what's drawing my power, isn't it? That makes sense. Okay. The Altera Water Filtration System. Any liquid into pure, refreshing, pH-balanced water? Yes, sir. Any liquid. That, that's not a very catchy slogan, but it's very nice. That explains it a lot, then. Maybe I should... Oh, is it have water now? I'll take it. What's weird is, um... I don't know if I'm just looking at the wrong part of the machine, but... It says 100%... Or... Does it not say... Oh, get out of this. It says 100% salt, right? How do I get the salt? I thought you could, like, harvest salt from these things. But... I don't know. I guess it'd be weird if it came out this part. It's like, one nozzle for... Water? One nozzle for... For salt. I don't know. It'd be nice to have... Salt just for when I need it, but... I, I think the only thing I have a need for it now is drawing food. I don't really do that, because that... <laughs> makes me thirsty. I knew that. It's good to know, though. It's good to know that's what's um, sucking down power. That's why I need my bioreactor. That's my, why I might need more soil, even more solar panels. Especially if I'm going to plan on building more uh, water filtration places. It'd be really nice to have uh, a ton of um, a ton of them available because it's pretty slow giving me water. Um, anywho, right, good, good to know, good to know, that gives us information, that's nice. Power, nuclear reactor, do we have this? I'll check if we have it. I forgot if we had it. I don't... Rem I guess we do. Plus steel, advanced wiring, lead. Oh. So we do, do oh, but do, can we not, like... Is, do we have nuclear rods or whatever, or do, do we get the nuclear rod recipe once we make it. Reactor rod. Oh, use the power nuclear reactors. You're in, you're in the night. And we don't... We don't have those, right? We've read that before, haven't we? But we don't we don't have any. Right? It's Ryan Cube's radio. That's right. So, that's, um... That's not an energy solution for us yet. Anywho, uh, read it though. Um, nuclear reactor. Renewable energy sources will usually be sufficient for maintaining a small outpost. For everything else, there's nuclear power. Powered by up to four replaceable uranium reactor rods. Do not attempt to replace reactor rods without adequate protection. <laughs> well, that's worrisome. Do not attempt to overclock the reactor. Nuclear is ideal for energy. Inten uh, to energy intensive operations such as self sufficient colonies supporting more than 20 people. Industrial outposts operating multiple docks and heavy machinery, research stations housing live specimens. Which explains, I think we saw this at the um, Omega, which would make sense there. Or at any place we've been to, they probably had one of these given their uh, reasons for using it. But, um, I, I'll be honest, I don't remember, uh, I, I think it was a thing in the first game, but I don't remember making one to be honest. They always seem scary, and I just thought, well, no, thank you. Um, but, yeah, we could give it a shot. I'm imagining, um, if we if we set up a big water filtration system, that uh, it might be good. Or it mentioned, like, um, multiple docks and heavy machinery, and uh, given that it's saying it to us, it's almost implying, like, hey, you're gonna need those things. So it might be necessary, who knows. Oh, vehicles, oh, the bronze suit. Oh, the beautiful bronze suit. Oh, my beautiful bronze suit. The pressure reactive, waterproof nano suit is a range of mechs designed to protect the pilot from extreme environments. The Mark III is the latest iteration and has so far only been rolled out by Altera for their own high value phase gate related operations. The suit is fully insulated from the outside environment. 
so it's cold resistant, I'm guessing. Powerful hydraulic limbs allow for manipulation of objects and power traversal of the environment. Rear mounted thrusters provide maneuverability in low gravity environments. A range of modifications are available to facilitate resource extraction and enhanced exploration. The prawn suit. It's got you covered. Darn right it does. Gosh, that was my favorite. That was really my favorite. It had such nice things for, again, mobility, drilling stuff. That was just the best. That was the best thing. Basically existed in that. Sea truck! The sea truck is an advanced underwater vehicle with attachable modular cabins for maximum adaptability in the field. Main cabin. Small and nimble when unencumbered by additional modules, the main cabin alone is comparable in speed to the sea moth. Interesting that they're mentioning the sea moth given that it seems like it's not a thing now. That, you know, we haven't gotten the, any blueprints for it at least, so clearly it seems like not a thing. But uh, this is explaining, um, what was it, Fred's notes? Unlike, uh, where was it? Saldara? The truck, sea truck log? Yeah, Fred's explaining how he had to dump the cargo. Because I keep going, like, what? Why'd you dump it? Why didn't you just drive off with it and keep it safe? But it's explaining things. So it's also um worrisome as well because um a lot of the things, the attachments do seem fun, interesting and, and cool, but if it makes us less fast we could get eaten alive in there if it's not fast enough to avoid stuff. Uh I um a wide reinforced glass viewing window provides excellent forward visibility while at the helm. Retractable helms, person's chair, no expense spared. Unlike the larger Cyclops submarine, the sea truck does not support the addition of internal modules like fabricators, of which would be nice. But wait! Wait a minute, I'll finish it first. But wasn't there a blueprint? Well, I'll look at it. Um, didn't we have a blueprint? It had a fabricator? <laughs> I thought. Uh, a sea truck fabricator module, excuse me. Excuse me, why do you lie to me like this? It's, okay. Um, blah, 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 it can be upgraded to enhance its speed, towing power, and crush depth, amongst other things. Maybe it just means, like, upgraded, then it can do that. Uh, rating speed, variable depending on cargo, crush depth, 150, upgradable, thank goodness. Power to replaceable power cells. Upgrade modules for, uh, one, wait, person's one plus? <laughs> well, that's worrisome. Well, unless we find Sam, maybe she can fit in there. That's weird that it'd say that. I mean, granted, I guess the game doesn't know that I'm just gonna be one person. Like, maybe it's trying to speak to me in a way that's like, if, if anybody else was reading this and was part of Altera or something, oh yeah, several people can fit in there probably, but... Because it's me, it's it's obviously just going to be one. I don't know. Oh, additional modules. Bespoke cargo modules can be attached to the rear of the main cabin, providing a range of powerful benefits. Available modules include fabricator. Oh, so it does mean fabricators. Docking stations. Habitation sections. Habitation sections. And of course, plenty of storage. And maybe habitation for like... Fish? I know that we had the aquarium thing. Additional cargo modules reduce the sea truck's speed, maneuverability, and power efficiency. Now that's worrisome. I was so excited to find them, but now I'm almost reluctant to build any. Additional modules can be jettisoned directly from the main cockpit's controls to enable exploration of tight spaces or in case of emergency like Fred had. The sea truck. Competing products are trucking hell. Uh, yes. Uh, aquarium module. What's good that it's gonna explain this? I was- I was wondering about this. External vacuums on this module collect live specimens from the surrounding water and deposit them safely and humanely inside glass tanks, which can then be accessed from inside the truck. Many years of technological endeavor produced the pressure-resistant single-sheet nano-reinforced glass of the tanks. This remarkable feat of engineering creates the optimal enclosure for the study and observation of contained fauna. Well, that's interesting. That almost implies that it's automatic, right? External vacuums collect life specimens from the surrounding water. So it just... I drive by and it just it sucks them right in. That's fun. <laughs> that's fun. I like it. I mean, 
I'm literally just gonna be like grabbing hold of them and and then eating them <laughs> this is basically for food I love how it's like oh yeah you can, you can uh, observe them you can study them swallow them whole a uh, docking module as the most user requested sea truck edition the docking module provides capacity to attach one standard prawn suit to the sea truck mechanical arms extend to automatically secure the prawn suit to the vehicle on approach internal features are limited due to the amount of structural support built into the walls of the module includes control panel for detaching prawn suit and bright yellow ladder for ease of exit or escape in B uh, it must be attached as the final module to function wait what it must be attached to the final module to fun this module is powered by the sea trucks main cabin prawn suit not included so it'd be nice if it was interesting that's not what I expected in terms of docking module but that makes sense that's cute then oh but the way it's saying must be attached to the final module, so... I was thinking of each of these modules being like... The final piece, like the- the- The one piece I get to haul along. Are they saying I can have like a- A train? Of little cars? Cause that's adorable. <laughs> Am I basically making my own, um... Freaking, um... What do they call it again? Uh... Cyclops? Am I basically making that? But but out of pieces? Like, hey, you know, I don't really want a fabricator, so I won't have one. Or, hey, I I can go without an aquarium. I don't really need that. Because the whole docking thing, that almost says it is, right? That's adorable. But worrisome, because it can't go deep very, very far right now. And I'm assuming upgrades are only going to take it so far. A uh, sea truck fabricator module contains one wall-mounted unique fabricator, unique, uh, and a small amount of additional storage space. Oh, that's nice. The fabricator module allows operators to craft everything available on a standard fabricator, while additionally offering the ability to construct sea truck modules. Wow! Failure to attach this module for trips lasting longer than eight hours absolves the manufacturer of fault in all incidents regarding caloric energy intake deficiencies. That's cute. So it's your own fault if you starve to death. Because if you don't have this. Because this is, this is that necessary. That is super necessary too. That's cute. Because you attach one of these. Attach one of these. You got food covered. You just drive around. You got food. Another thing that would be useful, though, is, like, the... Um, I don't know if it's, like, a thing... There are prawn suits... Oh, no, the prawn suits are act. I'm guessing that recharges the prawn suit. Um... When it's near warm stuff. Prawn suits are... Is there a sea truck? I'd like to know how deep this can go, because that... Really nice to know that. Interesting, though. No, yeah, well, it'd be nice to have, um, something to charge it with. Because then it could be completely self-sufficient. Or if it could have a, a module that charges batteries, that doesn't make sense. But it'd be nice. Well then! Thank goodness! I think that was everything. Let me close all the little... What's it, though? Beautiful. Gorgeous. We're finally caught up. Thank goodness, too. Because it's fun, you know... Getting something and then instantly reading it and knowing where it was from because it sucks for the Altera stuff. I've mentioned this before though, but it sucks for the Altera stuff not knowing exactly where I found it necessarily. And I'm um, kind of going, oh yeah, I guess that's relevant to that situation. So that's nice. That's nice. From now on, I'll, I'll try to um, get on top of it and, um, you know, as soon as I scan something or, or find a log, I'll. I'll read it, and that'll be nice. Anywho. Wonderfulness. I'll save. Probably I could have just gone on and... and quit without saving, because I technically didn't really do anything. But what do you do? It's, um... We did get the... Thing from... Alan, the new... Marker? I forgot which one's the new one. That's the new one. It's the new one. I know, because it looks deeper. And that's kind of scary, but poor sucker just thinks we suck, and 
They're just sitting around doing nothing, which I mean, I guess we kind of are. That's fine though. We're doing great. I think that'll be it for now, but yes, for the next part, I'll be back to actually making progress.